As you can see on the screen, the title of this lesson is Representing Organic Compounds. Um, just so you're aware, this handout is available to print uh, from our online notebook where you found the video. However, you know, I don't think it's a big deal for you to sketch out this table. I would suggest you turn your page landscape. That'll give you more space to draw the structures um, uh, as you go. And you will need to leave space for isomers 2 and 3, which you'll be completing tomorrow in class. So two of the main learning goals for this unit are drawing and naming organic compounds. So it really helps to know the different ways to represent them so that you'll recognize the structure in a question uh, and be able to represent them yourself. Tomorrow we'll be um, doing a model building activity in class, which is based on the knowledge of this lesson as well as it's a thinking task. Uh, and it, it's all part of building your understanding leading towards learning how to name these structures. So, uh, it's important to begin to understand the concept of structural isomers and so I will introduce that concept in this lesson also and you'll explore that more in the model building activity in class. As always, I'd recommend you jot down any questions you have as you copy the lesson and listen to the video. I will gladly answer your questions in class. So, you'll see in the instructions up here that I mention, um, you know, using model kits in class, we'll be doing that. I also say here, you know, mini marshmallows and toothpicks, like you could work with your own equipment at home to do this also, um, but we will be doing a model building activity in class for isomer uh, two and three here. Okay, so the key then is to learn these different ways that we represent the organic compounds. So you'll notice the molecular formula, that's the same molecular formula you saw in, in grade 11. The idea that the number of atoms of each element is communicated by the subscripts following each uh, element symbol. So the molecular formula is helpful in that it tells us the number of atoms of each element in the molecule, but it's really not a lot of information um, as to the sequence or arrangement of these atoms. And that's where the second representation, the expanded molecular formula, comes in. So an expanded molecular formula is much more helpful in terms of drawing because the sequence of the atoms is communicated. So you'll see, see here that we still have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms and 12 hydrogens if you add them up, three plus two plus two plus two plus three. So we still have C5H12, but now we've been told that the first carbon has three hydrogens attached to it, and then that's bonded to a carbon, carbon two with two hydrogens, which is then bonded to carbon three and so on. So that's a lot more information. It makes it much easier to draw the structural formula. So the structural formula is um, the most complete diagram that you can draw. It shows all of the bonds between all of the atoms. This can get a little tedious if you have to draw, you know, 10 carbons with all of those hydrogens around, but it is the beginning drawing of understanding the structure. So this will tie closely into what we did in the covalent bonding lesson and hopefully you can see the octet in each of these, uh, for each of these carbons. So if you were to focus in on the electrons around the first carbon, you'll be able to count two, four, six, eight electrons. And you'll see that every other carbon also has the octet. So we still have the same five carbons, carbon one, two, three, four, five. And it's following the same sequence that the expanded molecular formula told us. So carbon one is bonded to three H's, one, two, three. And I don't want you to think those are electrons, so I'm gonna erase those, but uh, then carbon two is bonded to two H's and so on. 
Okay, so that does, as I said, get pretty tedious because once you're really used to this idea of the octet, you get tired of writing all of the bonds to all of the hydrogens. And that's where a condensed version of this diagram is really helpful. So that's where we go to the condensed structural formula. So the condensed structural formula does not show the carbon-hydrogen bonds. So you'll notice here that we omit the carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now, it doesn't mean that they don't exist in the molecule. We're just looking for an abbreviated way of drawing the structure. So saying that CH3 carbon 1 is then bonded to carbon 2, which is attached to two hydrogens, and then bonded to carbon 3, and so on to carbon 4 and carbon 5. Again, it's the exact same sequence that was communicated in the expanded molecular formula, but instead of showing all of the bonds like we did here in the structural formula, or complete structural formula, we're doing a condensed version of that. So basically omit those carbon-hydrogen bonds and you'll find it a lot faster to draw. Now the fastest and most common way that you'll see these structures drawn in um, different documents and you know um, sites that you'll see online is a line diagram. Okay, so we started to explore that already in the iohexol molecule uh, so there was a brief lesson there at the end of the covalent bonding about this. And hopefully you can apply what you learned there to see the sequence, the same sequence, for this first isomer of C5H12. So at the end of every line segment, we have a carbon. So there's one carbon here, a second here, a third here, a fourth here, and a fifth here. And we know that every carbon here is bonded to the exact number of hydrogens that will make it stable. So carbon 1 is bonded to 3 hydrogens, which is what we saw in the other representations, and carbon 2 is bonded to 2 hydrogens, and so on. It follows the exact same pattern as what you see in the um, different representations above. As far as how we name this, uh, because all the carbons are singly bonded, that's why we're seeing this A-N-E. That tells us that all the carbon bonds are single bonds. And pent, if you think back to math and pentagon, you might be thinking five. And so you'll see one, two, three, four, five carbons. Um, we call this the parent chain. It's the longest continuous carbon chain, but I'll save the naming for another lesson. So don't worry about completing the name will build on that and when, when you've learned the naming then you can complete these but in class tomorrow you will be uh, given organic um, model kits and asked to pull out five carbons and 12 hydrogens and sequence them in a different arrangement than the one that you just saw so isomer number one here was pentane and we had five carbons bonded to each other in a continuous chain You'll notice the definition down here of structural isomers. These are molecules that have the same molecular formula. So if you look up here, isomer number 2, C5H12, isomer number 3, C5H12, and isomer number 1, C5H12. So they all have the same molecular formula. But the key is the sequence is different. There's a different sequence of atoms. So by the way, this is not different. To have one carbon bonded to a second, bonded to a third, bonded to a fourth, and then bring the fifth down here, that is not a different sequence. That is still considered five carbons in the, uh, in the longest continuous carbon chain. So that is not a different sequence. If we were to bring, you know, a, oops, sorry about that. If we were to bring a carbon up this way, that also would not be a different sequence. If we were to bring a carbon down here, that is still five carbons in a continuous chain. So how can you tell it's continuous? Well, I'll use the green to show this, but coming back to the structural formula in isomer number one, I'll start at carbon number one and I'm going to trace to the next carbon and keep going to the next carbon without backtracking with my pen. And so because I was able to trace five carbons connected to one another, that's a continuous carbon chain. If I start, if I start here in this diagram and trace 
across. I'm not finished because I could come down here. But you'll notice that's only four carbons and I really left out the, the one in the beginning. Could I, maybe I'll do this one in yellow, could I have started up here and come down, so just come straight down, and then come across and then down. And absolutely I could, and that would give me five carbons. So it's super important that you start to learn how to recognize a continuous carbon chain. So here's another example of five carbons. You know, is that a, going to be a different sequence? Like we are still going to have three hydrogens around this carbon to make it stable. We are still going to have two hydrogens on this one, two here, two here, and three here. You know, is that any different than the sequence that we saw for isomer number one? And really it's not. If I go and find that continuous carbon chain, I could start here and trace up and across and down, and that would be five in a row, if you will, even though I realize it's not a horizontal row. I mean a continuous path. So that means that in our line diagram, which looked like an M, a stretched out M, we could actually have drawn a W, right? Or we could have come like, like this. Or I could have done that. That would still be five carbons all in a continuous chain. So with this, one, two, three, four, five, and, and so with this, one, two, three, four, five. So none of these examples that I have drawn here, none of these are isomer number two or isomer number three. They are all exactly the same as isomer number one. When we build the structures tomorrow, that will become really obvious because you'll be able to rotate um, the atoms around the single bonds and you'll see how they can start. Isomer number one could start to look like some of these structures or all of them really. So that's it for the lesson. Um, Hopefully isomer number two and number three, those columns will be um, blank. And as you come into class and start building the molecules, you'll encounter the thinking task and work in small groups to be able to come up with different sequences of the five carbons and 12 hydrogens to find the second and third isomers.